<laughs> yes, we love it. Tell me to you to come. We'll sit on your lap and tell you the story. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Eli with Take A Vow. Obviously, we are here at the Walter Kerr Theater celebrating Hades Town with Lola Tung and Ani DiFranco. We are here because they are the new cast members in Hades Town and their performances are just out of this world. So I actually got the cool opportunity to sit down with them and chat about their uh, run in the show and uh, what it's like to be on Broadway with Lola and Ani, who are making their Broadway debut. And we, of course, got to chat with none other than Jordan Fisher as well, talking about what it's been like to be a Broadway vet and tackle the role of Orpheus in Hades. We're here with Ani, and she is currently playing Persephone in Hades Town on Broadway at the Walter Kerr Theater. But you've been with the show for 14 years, really? Yeah. Like, you know, this in a journey. weird way, yes. Yeah, right? Your record label, like, and company produced the concept album, and you were yeah. also on the concert, concept album right, as right, the role yeah. you're currently doing. So what has the full circle moment kind of been like and to finally make your Broadway debut with this show? Yeah, I mean, I never pictured myself uh, making any kind of Broadway <laughs> debut. Um, but like you say, I have this long history with the show yeah. since before it was the show that right. we know and love. Um, yeah, I released the original concept album on my label. Um, and, you know, I was, after that record got released, there was sort of a workshopping phase. I mean, there were, you know, again, yeah, it took 13 or more years for it to get to where it, uh, it is now. So I did a few of those readings, you know, singings, you know, where, which were just like musical shows on stage with a band, you know, playing Persephone and uh, the, you know, the Hermes character was still being developed, the narration, you know, the songs had some had yet to be written, you know, they, it was still being formed. Yeah. And then um, Todd Sikafus, who's a longtime musical collaborator of mine, he plays bass with me for 25 at least years. Um, yes, he's also a musical genius in and of his own right. And he is one of the co-arrangers of uh, Haiti Sound Broadway. Um, so, you know, as it, as it landed at the Walter Kerr and was you know, ramping up to opening night on Broadway, I was experiencing it through Todd. You know, he'd be on tour with me, but he was in headphones. You know, he would only take his headphones off long enough to play a show, and then he's right back in with the daily revisions and the, you know, uh, tweaking the arrangements. And, you know, I mean, I was aware through him of all those last minute choices, you know, like the song Cups, like, should it be pre-bow? Is it too weird to do it post-bow? That's weird. Right. It's weird. Should we cut it all together? You know, just ah, ah, right up until the last minute, you know, just refining and refining what it became. And um, yeah, I got, I got to come to opening night, you know, yeah. at the Walter Kerr and just so amazed by what that level of dedication and vision can do over the course of... 13 years. Absolutely. It's been pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously, like, you were a part of the concept album, so just, like, bringing it back to that, like, when they first approached you to be like, hey, we have this concept of a musical, and, like, here's some songs, yeah. like, what was just, like, the initial reaction to it all? Well, there was no they. There was Aeneas. Oh, you wow. know, I mean, I'm just, yeah, so just to, to clarify, well, no, Ta I introduced her to Todd, you oh know, because, so it was Aeneas, this young songwriter who I was releasing on my label because I, you know, I like to give a leg up to people like me, you know, former me, you know, yeah. coming in from the outside, making music uh, from left field and needing just a home to release, you know, so Righteous Babe is like, you know, uh, that kind of label. Yeah. And so Aeneas sent me a cassette. She mailed me a cassette of her 
and her friends and compadres in Vermont. Yeah. Doing, you know, the very first <laughs> iteration of Hades Town. Again, much of it yet unwritten. Yeah. Um, and she said, I want to make this into a record. You know, can you help me? So, you know, I helped her gather the artists together that played the roles initially on the, the initial record and um, release it. And yeah, that was just the beginning of so many phases yeah. of evolution. Yeah, and now you've kind of seen all of the different, yeah. you know, reiterations yeah. of the yeah. show. That's got to be so cool. So cool. And I'm and I really hats off to Aeneas because yeah. I, for somebody so young as she, you know, I, I just, I put myself in her shoes and I think, man, the moment that record came out on Righteous Babe, I probably would have gone, okay, done, right. moving on, wow. did it. Interesting. Or, you know, the production in the East Village or here or there, you know. I feel like if it were me, any one of those phases, I would have called end game. Um, you know, it really takes a lot to bring that many people into the process, to navigate that many personalities, mm. that many egos. It's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> truly. I can't imagine. And watching her take that on again and again and again and invite people in and and negotiate and navigate that process to keep pushing towards this vision that she somehow knew we're not there yet mm. there was still more there's still more to do there's further to go uh, it just so remarkable to me Watching her go through that process, you know, as a music artist yourself, like, do you ever, did this kind of allow you to open the door of, like, maybe I would want to write a show for Broadway or write music well, for Broadway? I, I don't know about Broadway, but I, <laughs> part of the uh, one ingredient to me saying yes and yeah. showing up here and doing this on stage uh, this moment is because I've um, been asked or commissioned to do a piece of my own. Oh my gosh. Um, and I thought, I don't know anything about musical theater. So saying yes to this gig would be a real learning process for me. And, and you know, that could factor into this piece that I've just begun working on. So, yeah, it's been great education, among other things. Oh also, just a thrill, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your performance is incredible in the yeah. show. You do it so well. And those are some big shoes to fill, yeah, you know. Persephone right. is not an yeah. easy role. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're kind of like a little, I don't want to say drunk, but like yeah. kind of, you know, at yeah. the same time. But you're such an integral and sentimental part of the story all at the same time. So yeah. balancing that has been kind of crazy, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I feel like I'm still honing in on that balance point between yeah. Persephone's colossal, damaged, self-medicated, broken side right. and her, you know, the patroness of all of this, like the, the provider, the badass, who somehow, even though the world is broken and her marriage is broken and there's so much destruction and humanity is enslaved in this modern system, that's you know killing the environment and the actual world. Yeah. She, you know, she still keeps showing up in joy, you know, and providing and and living in her hope and um, you know the promise of spring and so yeah I you know I, I'm I'm still honing in on you know I'd love for her to you know, to carry her with depth yeah. and many layers, uh, you know. I love that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Here you are so making your Broadway debut in Hades Town. Uh, what's something that you learned? I mean, obviously, like, you're a veteran of the screen, Summer I Turned Pretty and all that. What's something about Broadway that you, like, may not have even known? Because I know you were a theater kid at LaGuardia until you were on Broadway. <laughs> um, I guess with Broadway... I mean, there are a bunch of things that I'm learning. Everyone's just like, stay hydrated, mm. take your vitamin C, steam, just like really 
take care of yourself because it's it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> so a lot of like self-care things that I'm learning for sure. Is that sort of an adjustment for you or is that kind of how you approach the onset life as well? It's I guess it's kind of how I've had to approach onset life too. I think maybe, I don't know, maybe I get colds really easily. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, I think a lot of it is just like it's so much fun and it's so wonderful and it's awesome to be doing what you love. But then you're like, okay, go to sleep early. Yeah. Don't stay out. Do all the things that you need to do to really make sure you're taking care of yourself so you can keep up that stamina. You know? Absolutely. Well, I've got to ask you about the man sitting over there. Um, I mean, we, <laughs> Jordan, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we grew up like watching him on Disney Channel and stuff like that. So I, I've got to ask, you know, like, what has it been like to, to work from him, learn from him by watching? And what, I don't know, like, what has that been like to create that chemistry that Orpheus and Eurydice need to have to sh share this love story? It's been so cool. I mean, he is so good at what he yeah. does and, and has been doing the show for a little longer than I have. And um, I got the privilege of, you know, to watch him and Soleil do the show together before I joined. And, and him and also some of the understudies, Balin, who's one of the fates, who's uh, a Eurydice understudy. Um, and it was so cool just to be able to be like, wow, each pairing is so different and so magical and beautiful. And there are different things that make them shine together and uh, and we didn't have many rehearsals together <laughs> um but <laughs> i don't know but uh it was really really easy to sort of fall into a, a natural rhythm which has been so cool and of course i loved him in a uh, teen beach movie so yeah, you right. know right. you know haven't said it to his face i don't think yet but <laughs> maybe today no one day. tell him no one tell him it's our <laughs> secret um i love it no yeah he's an icon and so that's gotta be pretty cool um you mentioned Saleya and kind of watching her like i was curious to know like how familiar were you with the show before you came in and like who, did you watch eva like bootlegs or something like how did you kind of prepare for your Eurydice? Yeah, <laughs> slime about. tutorials. I don't know what a bootleg is. <laughs> uh, my mom has figured out what slime tutorials are now, so that's a fun thing in our house. Um, yeah, I actually watched the show with the original cast, or with uh, Eva in 2020, February of 2020, which was awesome. And I immediately fell in love with it and learned the cast recording front to back, you know, of course. Um, so I was able to see that and then got to see Soleil do it a bunch and like it's so cool to be able to see such different interpretations that are so equally beautiful and like rich and Eurydice you know they're they're all incredible. How do you like after seeing that and everything like how do you kind of watch that and and allow it to influence your performance but at the same time make it your own? I think you kind of have to, like, yeah. talking with the directors and with the cast, too, like, uh, everything they said to us was sort of like, the show thrives and sort of only works when you bring your own unique interpretation to the characters, because you can't copy anyone else's work, you know? It's like, it, it won't work as well, and that's awesome I think that's like the most beautiful thing ever um, getting to see that's why the show is so different every night and every time there's a new cast and uh, and equally as beautiful and you just discover new things with different people and um, I even got to do the show for the first time with one of the Orpheus uh, swings who I was in rehearsal with Brandon who's awesome and I was like even this feels like a different show right now than doing it with Jordan and they're both so incredible and I love discovering new things about my character through through these different pairings and stuff like that. So it's really, really awesome. I love that. What has it been like to allow yourself, because I don't know, there's a vulnerability about live theater that like you may not even realize when you're on set. Right? Yeah. Um, so what has it been like to kind of showcase even more of your talents? Because we knew you could <laughs> act, right? But now you can sing and everyone was like, wait, she sings? You know, like, what has that been like to, to explore that and do it in front of so many people? Yeah, kind of wild, kind of scary sometimes. I think the singing of it all has always been the thing that I'm most scared about sure. 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 yeah it's scary it's scary when people discover something about you for the first time and they're like oh my god wait a second um but it's also been really rewarding and really cool and i have i feel like i'm in the safest and best environment to do that and singing some of like the 
coolest, most beautiful, poetic music ever. So, like, I'm, I feel so lucky, and um, and it does feel right and comfortable because you know it's sort of like where I first fell in love with performing and acting and all that. So it, it's really nice. Well, you talk about singing. I've got to ask, do you have a favorite <laughs> one that you sing every night to tell her story? I mean, I said this, okay, I think I'm going to go with all I've ever known. Okay. I think it's beautiful to watch the falling in love actually happen throughout that song. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so good. And I hate to admit it, but I've seen some slime tutorials of you. <laughs> they're, they're surfacing on TikTok, you know? Like, but it's, it's, no, it's so good. And I'm obsessed with listening to you sing it. Your Wait For Me reprise. Oh like, God. You, you <laughs> That's kill the one it. I'm shaking every time. It's so good. You, you would never know. Seriously, it's so good and it's like so different you know and that's what we all love about it but there, you have such a um, innocence that you bring to the role and it's just so fun to watch because I feel like it's something that we haven't really seen and this take of the role I mean both of you guys it seems like these roles were kind of made for you without even anyone knowing you know like it just fits y'all like a glove it's so fun to watch truly um well i mean the winter of 2024 is the winter that you turned into a broadway star <laughs> so i've gotta ask fill in the blank you know summer of 2024 is the summer you turned into what what's next um, <laughs> a girl who stayed in her bed all the time no i'm kidding <laughs> The girl who um, relaxed for one. The girl who relaxed for it. No, I'm kidding. I, I love being up and moving. So, yeah, we'll see. I don't know yet. We'll oh see. God, we'll obsessed. see. Well, it's so great. Hey, everyone, go check her out. March 17th. I mean, it's a short run. A, a month, you know, or, or less than a month already left. Um, is that kind of been like a reminder of being like, hey, I've got to soak in every moment of this. Yes. And you saying it again, I was like, I'm oh, no, so in the best way, in the best way. Because I'm like, I can't believe I'm lucky enough to get to even do this for right. five weeks or whatever, yeah. you know. Well, it's incredible. Everyone go to the Walter Crew Theater. <laughs> go check out Hades Town. Thanks for doing this. Thank Great to so see you. Good yeah, for sure. You Thank crazy. you. I mean, this is crazy. We're here at Jordan Fisher, Orpheus in Hades Town, currently over at the Walter Crew Theater. Um, I mean, you're you're a Broadway vet now at this point. Like it's crazy. It all happened like back to back too within yeah, such a short wild. amount of time. You know, is it kind of crazy? And do you kind of feel your Broadway kind of journey uh, change in each show that you do as you continue to be a vet and kind of more into like the leadership role instead of not so much the newbie? Yeah, that's a great question. Oh, I love you. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, because life. Yeah. Yes, because time happens and growth happens mm -hmm. and uh, experiences shape you and mold you right. and cut your teeth. And in those experiences, you have, I'll just, I can only speak singularly. I can sure. only speak for myself. I can't speak for anybody else. In those experiences, you, meaning me, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, will have buildings that you go in that might not be the warmest. Mm -hmm. You'll have sets that you walk on where you, it's not it might not the dynamic of things the actor that you were looking forward to working with right. might not be in the best mood like it's such a constantly ever flowing thing that yeah. we do and life dictates so much of that Absolutely. we're supposed to hide we're supposed to put those things away we're trained to do so whatever method it is that you use mm -hmm. Lock in, become another person, serve that story, yeah. right? Serve the story, serve the audience, serve the people that are listening, serve the art, and then take your bow yeah. and then put your clothes back on and go live life. Right. That's the part that I, life needed, my 20s needed to happen. Right. And I'm so grateful that they are very, very, very much so coming to a close here in April. Yeah. Um, because because twenties suck, but they're also so exhilarating and thrilling because it's a lot of new. It's yeah. a lot of like new things, right? Absolutely. And a lot of yeah, 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 yeah. And so my debut happened two blocks down the way in a show that swept the globe. Yeah. And in a show that at that time was still at its peak of popularity. Only half of the original cast had left. People were still camping outside of the street. Crazy. It was wild. It was a wild time. That was my Broadway debut. Mm. And that was after years of training. Yeah. 
that was after so many just, you know, so, so many hours, blood, sweat, tears that, that no one had seen. Only people that knew me in Birmingham or that I worked with in Los Angeles had ever seen it. That they, we had worked together. And so, you know, getting to have those experiences, getting to learn as an actor, um, now as a producer as well, like what makes the most conducive environment, um, I feel like has helped me a better leader and helped me become a better leader, helped me become, uh, you becoming a father yeah. has given me more capacity, more space to hold for other people, more empathy. Um, that's made me a better artist. Absolutely. I feel like, I was just telling, telling someone earlier, I kind of wish that I'm so grateful that Haiti Sound is happening at this point in my life when, uh, yeah, the amount of experience that I have playing a guitar, the amount of experience that I have going with the flow, manipulating, if things go awry, I can handle yeah. because I have been doing it long enough now. Right. And there's trust in that and there's yeah. faith in that where my company is concerned and my cast, the band and all of that. And that's so, 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 that's awesome. It's so exciting. Things happen. <laughs> And how you handle it is what makes you a good leader. And I wish that in a lot of ways, because I've learned so much um, in Hadestown and in, and in letting go and being okay with like, hey, this is a hard show to do. Yeah. It, I sing a lot. I'm singing high, singing hard. Yeah. And vocally, we get tired. And it's okay, mm -hmm. really, when that happens. A show ago, two shows ago, three shows ago, not so much. Yeah. I'd be going home. I'd be on social media. I'd be scroll. I'd be like, <laughs> you know, berating. I have a toddler. I have an almost right. two-year-old. I, 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 I've worked really, really hard in Final Fantasy VII <laughs> to to get this new summoning materia yeah. that I finally have in my in my uh, Iron Sword now. And like, I'm way more concerned about beating Sephiroth than I am about how somebody might have felt about a crack that I had in a show that I do eight times a week professionally. Real. Wow. And that's not an easy thing to like allow yourself to be no, okay with, you know? But life is, th these experiences right. and like the cutting my teeth and the going through the stuff has let me be able to now take things and roll yeah. with them. And, and you begin uh, to trust yourself and, uh, and allow yourself to say hey they like you know i can do this and i'm here for a reason. and i'm here for you, know? you too yes, exactly. i'm in your corner yeah, yeah. i've done it oh my god i know how it feels it wasn't long ago where where i was new at it yeah we can talk about it yeah yeah, yeah no that was like a brilliant answer okay. literally awesome. yeah thank you for for going through all of that yeah yeah, yeah. 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 i'm long-winded anyway yeah. I, mean, like, I get i get in trouble with my yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm curious because we had kind of just talked about, yeah. you know, all these shows that you've been in, especially recently. This is a question I got to prompt him. Uh, if you had to take any of your characters that you played out to lunch or out for a night of fun or whatever, Ooh. who, what character would you want to bring? Just Broadway? Or yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Oh, just, just, just Broadway. I mean, perhaps, I mean, if you want to go further, you can. Orpheus would be impossible to talk to. Mm. Um, Evan would stress me out. Evan. Um, Anthony, l sweet, lovely guy. He, I, he's got so, I can't, I can't tutor him on the world mm -hmm. and street smarts. And I feel like taking him out for a drink would be like popular and yeah. wicked, like, but it would just be the entirety of our time together. Um, so, so I, I'm going to have to go with probably John Lawrence. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know he's. He likes my people, and he did a lot for my people, and um, is complex and complicated, like we all are, like, you know, these mythological characters that we've somehow turned, like, our founding fathers into, are, uh, literally just are like us, like, they're just trying to figure out what they're going to watch <laughs> that night. Like figuring out how the freaking world works, right. you know, Truly. like and just like <laughs> taking wild guesses. Yeah. That's also, hey, that's being a parent. We mm. we don't know what we're doing right. ever. Yeah, and that has helped me, like going back and like working through things. I'm like, man, my parents are awesome. Yeah. They really had no clue what to do, <laughs> and with me, oh my gosh, I kept them on their toes. Uh -huh. 
holy and they've already gone through so much yes like all over the place they're making sacrifices left and right they're taking out mortgages and they all this stuff i am just a nuisance i'm a menace oh my gosh you know and it's just love it's just unconditional love anyway it's like this show's a a perfect show for me and my life right now for my family for it's crazy this show literally i was just telling lola it feels like you were like born for this show with your talent with what the show is yeah no truly your performance in this show is unbelievable and it's not an easy role to fill like you like you said it's a behemoth of a role it's, I mean, it's, a very beloved show. it's beloved show it's got this huge fandom and everyone's used to like certain people and you know all of that so it's it's crazy but i'm curious you know you talk about what t- being a father kind of taught you as a person and as an artist what is orpheus the role of orpheus taught you as a human and an artist oh man to 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 we're all so we're all so similar. Yeah. I think if anything, or- Orpheus has taught me in his recognition of his similarity to Hades and how that kind of like there's a spiral in that. And something that I've discovered recently that's like turned Epic Three into a whole new thing for me, <laughs> just in the last like couple of weeks. But there's a recognition yeah. in similarity there, yeah. right? And that's what he's able to call on, call out to you know, towards Hades when he's like, you know, what what has become with the heart of that man, you know, now that he's king, what's become with the heart of the man, now that he has everything. The more he has, the more he holds the greater the weight of the world on his shoulders. See how he labors beneath that load, afraid to look up and afraid to let go. So he does what he knows to do, which is exactly what Orpheus does half of act one, which is mm. keeping his head low on that stool, keeping his back bending on that stool, mining away, chipping away at this thing that could potentially bring good. Right. We don't know. Neither does Hades. Yeah. He's just doing what he knows to do, which is exercising power and strength. It's defense mechanisms. We're also similar, yeah. and we do not give people the benefit of the doubt. Mm-mm. I'm here to, I'm here to make no, a, anyone who doesn't want to hear that <laughs> yeah. mad as hell. <laughs> You, you, I can be, be, be no, hun, no, you don't. No, you don't. What about that person on the train this morning? Mm. It's crazy. What about what, what about that dude that like stunk? So you moved cars, mm. like, and and had things to say about it afterwards. Right. Like, where is the treasure inside of your chest? Mm. Where is your pleasure? Where is your youth? Whereas this can go not just to his love across the way, where is the man with his arms outstretched to the fill in the blank he loves with nothing to lose? Unbelievable. A nice, you know, like otherworldly songwriting. Like it's just incredible. We're all so similar. Yeah. The things that we talk to other people about that we can't stand in other people, mm. we do that. I know, it's crazy, it really is. Well, I'm curious, because we talked about that, that kind of like act one and him keeping his head down the whole time, you know, and act two, I mean, the world knows the story, like the tragic story of your yeah. Odyssey and Orpheus, yeah. but every time, eight shows a week, the gasp, the gasp. Yeah. I gotta talk about it, yeah, you know? Sure. How do you keep fresh? Like, how do you, like, the whole cast just invites this room of a thousand plus people into Not your even world. 948. Yeah. And that's what makes this place so special. It's we awesome. love it. It's so intimate. intimate. <laughs> yeah, we love the intimate theater. Come, on, we'll sit on your lap, tell you the story. <laughs> I love it. But, like, I, you know, it's so true. Like, they legit, like, you feel like you're up on stage with you guys, you know, telling this story. Like, how do you, how do you keep it fresh? And how do you, uh, I don't know, kind of welcome that while you know you're about to make them real sad? If we've done our job. <laughs> real. If we've done our job. If we've done our job correctly, we have uh, suspended reality mm. for a minute. We're all just in the underworld together yeah. for two and a half hours. You have to believe that Orpheus won't do it. Yeah. And that's my task wow. every night. You kind of approach that, you know, like saying, hey, maybe tonight is the night where I. If the show do it. runs two hours and 35 minutes for two hours and 32 minutes, I am solely focused on ensuring that you believe fully 
there's that there's no way yeah. that he could. Wow. So that, that's the mountain. <laughs> He's got chill. Yeah, that's like the every day, like with my hiking boots on, like that's the top of the mountain that I'm looking at. Wow. And then I get to slide down. There's a slide on the other side, sure. and it, and it lands in a in a in a in a bed of marshmallows and peeps and hugs, and yeah. it's lovely. And that's cups, and that's the way that we get to like leave with you know leaving everybody with a hug. It's so special. Mm -hmm. That's deserved, though. Really? Hopefully, hopefully that's deserved. If we have done our job correctly, and we're going out and we're telling a truthful show, mm. we're being honest as creatives and artists and performers then there will be a gasp. Yeah, and there is, because every night, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It really is, it's amazing. And you guys are very openly talk about it, you know, like you are not hiding anything about this show. No, like from the rip is. we're like, hey, yeah. it's a sad song. It's a sad tale from way back when. It's right. a sad song, we're gonna tell it again. <laughs> again, it's a sad song. Yeah. Y'all do it so brilliantly, so I, no, thank you. Seriously, I'm upset. I've got to ask, you, you don't have to do this, but um, perhaps a couple octaves lower to, to preserve the chords. Um, I want to hear Wait For Me to the tune of Do You Want to Build a Snowman, but you don't have to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to then don't take worry. advantage of your offer of not doing it okay, then, fair um, and let us use our imagination. <laughs> well, I gotta say thank you for that, you know, video because that is literally peak childhood that for me. That video changed my life. Yeah, real. That video changed my life. It that video made so people good. go, "Oh wait, what?" You can sing. <laughs> and then I'm like, hey, look, yeah. sure, yes. I'm, yeah. I love it. Well, thank you thank so you, much. Man, I Congratulations it. Thank on everything. You so much. Yeah, yeah, of course. Go check out Jordan Fisher, Please. Orpheus and Hades. Right there. Walter Theater. Kurt Theater. Run. Seriously, this role was literally made for him, so you won't regret so it. So sweet. No, yeah. Thank we'll you. See you there. And that wraps up our Hades Town content. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more exciting content from Take a Bow on Broadway. Come and wait for me. Hey.